everybody so this is gonna be a different video it's not gonna be a cover but I have been thinking about doing this video a while so it's filming a series about my PCOS journey I'm just at the beginning of it not that I just got diagnosed but just more recently putting my energy into reading about it and researching and looking or watching other people's videos and all that so I wanted to document it while I am still at the beginning I see a lot of videos of people who kind of are in the middle of managing their PCOS and the weight loss videos especially are really inspiring and I kind of want to see and document the progress of how I do that from the beginning to the end. So just a disclaimer, I am a registered nurse, but by all means do not have any experience in fertility and things like that. I don't have any um, specialties close to that even. And the, the closest thing I deal with with endocrinology is diabetes in the hospital, but that's also managed. I guess quite differently from the PCOS normally. So I'm also learning a lot about the pathophysiology of PCOS and just the physiology of the reproductive systems and the metabolic and endocrinology systems too. So um, that's really exciting. PCOS is short for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's one of the most common ovarian um, disorders in reproductive age females. It was and still is considered as one of the less understood conditions in women's health. In women with this condition, ovaries are enlarged due to multiple follicles forming instead of maturing into an egg. Oftentimes women with PCOS are insulin resistant, so there is a high risk of developing diabetes. It is also common for women with PCOS to have obesity and other slew of conditions that come with this, like high blood pressure or coronary artery diseases, any cardiovascular disease, stroke, gestational diabetes, and this can also continue far beyond reproductive age, especially when it is not managed. So the common symptoms of PCOS are obesity, difficult weight loss, irregular periods, polycystic ovaries and ultrasounds, hirsutism or overgrowth of hair um, in different parts of your body, acne, acanthosis nigricans, hyperandrogenism or um, increased male hormones, and insulin resistance. So for my experience, in 2015 or 2016, I'd already had irregular periods way before, but I actually bled for about two months straight and finally went to the doctor um, and I went and saw an OBGYN where she actually had started me on birth control then and ordered an ultrasound. So I did that and they did find multiple cysts in my ovaries. So. I kind of already knew back then, and this was in the Philippines, I kind of already knew back then that I might have or probably already had PCOS, but I never really thought too much about it and we never really explored it further. 2018, when I moved here to the US, I had seen an OBGYN and I asked to see if we could check for labs and check for my hormones and stuff. So we did that. I was already off my birth control then. I only took it for like six months in the Philippines and I was off it and my, my periods were regular after. But when I saw my doctor here, she had started me on a different kind of birth control. It was still through pills and she had ordered metformin after we saw that my testosterone was really high. So when I moved to the US, I had gained about 20 pounds I'd say in a year. So obviously at this time my periods went back to being irregular and I was just having hard time losing weight too. Fast forward to now, I am not taking my metformin and I have stopped my birth control just for a month. I'm actually seeing an endocrinologist on March 3, so I'm excited just so I can see what my hormones are again. I have been intermittent fasting for two years and I kind of want to see what that's done in terms of like helping with my hormones and my lipid levels and all that. So like I said, I've been putting energy into just researching and like learning more about PCOS and how I can manage it. And I'm not just doing that for fertility, not because I want children right now or anything like that, but just for my overall health. And if I do want kids, I, would, I don't want to have to go through that hurdle then if I can help it now, you know? So yeah. 
I am just in the beginning of this journey and I really am excited to document and just do a couple updates to help other women too because a lot of the other girls' videos actually really helped me. So what I am doing now. I think the first really big thing that I have changed is just that I've been intermittent fasting for two years. First it was more for weight loss and all that, but I don't really know. I feel like just intermittent fasting by itself doesn't really help unless probably if you're regulated hormonally. I think it's definitely helped with a lot of other things and I'm sure combined with regular regular exercise that it probably helps a lot of people. I also have been trying to create a habit and just regularly exercise whether it's a quick 20 minute you know resistance band workout or things like that that I can do at home. I just never really enjoyed forcing myself to work out if that makes sense. I'm in like said an endocrinology appointment um, that I'm looking forward to. I also have been a little bit more mindful about what I eat. I never really looked at the back or the labels of food. And since I met my boyfriend, I've just been more conscious of the ingredients and stuff that I put in my body. I think the exciting part is the supplements. I really, I'm one not to Put things in my body. I really hate taking pills or medicine. I've been trying just recently within the past week to be taking supplements regularly, whether it be vitamins or different things that, that'll help with my PCOS. A couple of the stuff I've been taking I have here with me. Oh, I don't know if you can see Yuki, but he's here right there. Hi, buddy. The first thing that I tried probably two years ago or maybe a year and a half ago was maca root powder. It's an adaptogenic herb that helps reduce estrogen and regulate periods and increase fertility. When I used it two years ago, it actually, I think the first month I got it, I used it pretty regularly and my period at the end of the month was very quick. I blood less than I normally did, so I'm not really quite sure. I think it helped. Um, but I haven't used it often enough to know really if it did anything, but it's really good to put in your protein shakes and stuff. The next thing I take every day is my multivitamin and my hair, skin, and nail gummies. I used to take a multivitamin with biotin in it, but when I went to the store, I couldn't find it, so I just used this and this together. This really just helps supplement my vitamins that I don't get in my nutrition as well as help with my hair growth since I've been having problems with losing hair. I also take fish oil and vitamin D. Um, vitamin D3 actually I take, I think I have it in a cupboard somewhere. I just didn't put it with my stash here. The omega-3s. There are studies that actually show that it can help with testosterone and regulate periods in women with PCOS. It also, with a fish oil, helps with my lipid levels and cholesterol and was recommended by my cardiologist to take when we first found out that my lipid levels were all out of whack. It also helps decrease inflammation in the body, which is one of the problems with PCOS as well. Um, and I, th I think a lot of women actually take turmeric for that too. I try to put that in my drink. I know they have capsules and pills that you can take too. Vitamin D3 also is proven to help with insulin sensitivity and promotes regular maturation of the follicles so they can become an egg. It also helps regulate the mood, especially when you are not out in the sun all the time, especially in the winter. Vitamin D3 really helps with regulating your mood and helps with depression and stuff like that too. So I was at Ulta one day and I actually found this brand. It's called Love Wellness. I think they have them at Target now too. I've, I think I saw some ads on Instagram about them and I thought it was really cute. I thought it was kind of gimmicky, but when I was at Ulta, I saw the back of some of the bottles that they had and they actually had really good ingredients. So I thought I'd try some of them. I was taking just regular probiotics from a different brand before, but they have these good girl probiotics. I have been taking this too. So probiotics actually help reduce testosterone in women as well and just helps reduce inflammatory markers and it helps with mental health too. These two, the hashtag mood pills and bye bye bloat, actually both have different herbs and stuff 
and then I actually saw a difference in my feeling of being bloated in the morning when I wake up since I've been taking Bye Bye Bloat regularly. The mood pills has GABA, it has Chase Berry Fruit Powder, Vitamin B6, uh, Wild Yam Fruit Powder, Theanine, St. John's Wort, powder and ginkgo leaf powder. These are all organic ingredients as well. This really helps just regulate your mood and all that. I've been taking this in the mornings before work and it really helps with how I feel going into work. These two, um, the green tea extract and the apple cider vinegar, I've just been taking since I actually don't really like drinking green tea, but I heard that these two actually help with fat burning. Apple cider vinegar also has been proven to kind of help with insulin and all that. I've just been trying to use these two to see if it helps with my weight loss at all. The newest addition to my collection, I should say maybe stash, I don't know, <laughs> but the newest addition to my supplements is actually this Myo and Dechiro inositol. It's from the brand Wholesome Story, but I think there are a couple of other brands that do them. I heard that the powder works better, but I got the capsules instead, just so I can take two in the morning. Um, I think the powder has like a sweeter taste that might break my fast, so I opted for the capsules and I might get the powder so I can do them at night. So this was actually recommended by a lot of YouTubers and just vlogs and stuff that I've found about PCOS and I haven't really had any effects or anything like that. I've yet to experience anything from it. I've only been taking it probably a week, so if I get any great results or anything, I'll let you guys know. So yeah, that's gonna be my first PCOS journey vlog and I am excited to see what my labs are gonna be during my endocrinology appointment and I'm just excited to see how this whole journey is gonna go. So if you like this content, please like and subscribe and comment down below if you have PCOS and stuff too. I'd really like to know what you guys do and how you manage your PCOS. Also, comment down below if you have any suggestions of what videos I should put up. I was thinking more vlog style videos. There's a um, thought maybe that, like a, a learning how to cook with me because I don't really know how to cook very well. And of course, like song covers and stuff. So yeah. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.